I travel far over land and sea. There is a place I love, and it waits for me. There's nowhere else I know that I would rather be than home again back in New Boston. May I welcome you to our film, New Moston, Past and Present. First, we will look at New Moston as it is today, and then Bernard and I will take you on a tour of its most interesting places. We've seen New Moston, still pretty in some places, but if we go back 150 years ago, it was a very different story. Beautiful countryside, Moston Brook here, coming all the way up to virtually its source, fed by Whole Bottom Brook and Bower Brook. And then in 1804, the Rochdale Canal came along. And that split the old path between Failsworth and New Moston. Now, when people nowadays come from Failsworth, they come over the canal and over what we call the white stuff. But if we go back to 1850, there was no white stuff. It hadn't been filled in. So you came over the canal bridge, you dropped down into a dell and came up the side. And all these people who lived round here had no running water supply as we had. You have to collect your water from the well. And quite often, mothers in Fells would send their children over to collect water from Bung's well. And being children, of course, you come to the canal bridge and you see the dell going down. Much easier to fill your cans up from the canal and take them back as though it's fresh water. Coming along up the canal here, we come to the Jacquard Loom Works and the little inlet where the barges came in to load and unload. Further up towards Chadderton, we have Henshaw House, we have Birch and Bower House, and we have the site of the old uh, colliery, the old Bower colliery, and on the other side of Bower Lane, which is now Hollywood Avenue, we had the rope works. 
Coming over this way, we come to Pitt's Farm, which is probably the oldest bu building round about. It was built sometime in the 1600s, and that's on Hawthorne Road. We come along here to what is now Moston Main East, and here we have the Gilded Hollies, and there was Dr. Parry's house here. Coming across here to Slater Fold, this is approximately on the site of Nutter's Park. Further coming up here, we come to Little Nutter's house. This was the home of the Cheatham, the Chatterton family, and it was here that William Chatterton was born. He became Bishop of Chester and then the Bishop of Lincoln. Over the other side of the railway, the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway came through in 1839. And on the other side here we have Great Nutter's Hall and this was the home of the other great family, the Cheetham family. This is the Failsworth side of the footpath through to New Moston, coming under the railway bridge. The railway was built in 1880 and there hasn't always been an underpass here. But there was a terrible tragedy. Two young boys from what is now Parkfield Road were killed here by trains. And after this, and after much public outcry, this underpass was uh, built. Countless people from New Moston who worked at Frantis in Failsworth came under this bridge. Most of them coming in the morning, a lot of them went back for lunchtime and went home in the evening. And you can see the pool of water under the bridge now, but at one time it used to flood quite badly and there were duck boards there so people could walk across. Whole Bottom Brook comes from the area of the gasworks in Hollin Wood and it flows under the Oldham railway line and it's coming down here. It's one of the tributaries of the Moston Brook. And um, Bar Brook comes up a little bit more on the left. And a few years ago, this used to be a, a real derelict area and gradually it's being landscaped. Bar Brook came from the Drury Lane area of Hollin Wood, past what is now the Mirror Printing Works. And here there used to be the Birch and Bower Mill, and the Bar Brook fed a water wheel which drove the machinery in the mill. And here we're looking where the brook used to come in under the canal to join up what is now Moston Brook. During the war, Ferrantes drew an emergency water supply from, from here. This is the where the, the jetty from the Rochdale Canal came up to the Crossley Loom Works. And there was a quay there where the barges used to load and unload. All we can see now in the background is uh, Raven Leach House and the loom works was on the right hand side of the house. Here we've got the canal and we can remember the jetty in our, in our time back in the 40s and 50s. Moving along the towpath towards Henshaw Bridge on Hollingwood Avenue, over on the right this is where the Bower Colliery used to be. This was sunk by Henry Skelthorne. And over on the left-hand side was Henshaw House. Henshaw House was the home of Mr. Marlin, who was the manager of the colliery at that time. The house was called Henshaw Lane End House, and it hasn't always been called Henshaw Lane. It used to be called Earnshaw Lane, after old uh, Earnshaw, who was a farmer in the district. A new bridge has been built now to, to accommodate the motorway and there's also a footbridge over which was provided by William Morrison who built the uh, supermarket on the right hand side. Interesting thing here on Wrigley Head Bridge, these two islets are where the roller went, so when the horse was pulling the barge, the rope sort of went along the roller and it didn't chafe on the woodwork, on the stonework.
On Wrigley Head Bridge, these stones were held together by a metal bar that went all, all the way across. And this is the original bridge built around 1802. Coming up from Failsworth along the towpath towards the Wrigley Head Bridge, over on the left here it used to be two or three houses which we think were associated with the canal and could well have been lodging houses for barges as they were passing through. I like to stand on the canal bridge here and let the mind wander a bit. Away over on our right we've got Roman Road in Failsworth where the Roman legion, uh, legions used to come through. And a little bit further over, we've got the Oldham Road, which used to go up Wiccan Tree Lane, was the old road over into Yorkshire. And then we have the railway coming through in the 1800s. And before that, we had the canal in 1804. So it's a real series of highways through our district. Don't forget, in its day, this canal was the M62 for the barges passing through. On the Moston side of the canal, we're at the start of what we now know as the white stuff. And to the best of my knowledge, this was material which was brought from a chemical works in Miles Platting and dumped here after the canal was built to build it up in, in order that a footway could be made across. It's now been landscaped and being quite attractive. The path leads on to Parkfield Road, and you can see the new houses which were built on the Belgrave Road. Moston Brook is the natural dividing line between Failsworth and New Moston. The Failsworth Bank over on our left and New Moston on our right. Eventually it throws through Moston and joins the River Irk at Harper Hay. Belgrave Road, which used to be called Dixon Street until 1901. And coming round now, we're coming into Parkfield Road, which was Rickett Street. Some 50 yards up on the right-hand side is Vine House, one of the most important houses in New Moston. It had servants' quarters and stables attached to it. This lovely house was originally built in 1776 and it was burnt down sometime in the 18th century and we're told that the fire was started because the children of the house were letting off fireworks in the attic and we understand the house is completely gutted and it was rebuilt sometime in the 19th century. Elijah Dixon, New Moston's founding father, he died here in 1876 it was then of the home of the Inghams who were associated with St. Chad's Church. And Mr. Ingham was the man who formed the committee of local people with the idea of establishing a Church of England actually in New Moston. In Vinefold, at the side of the house, we can see the servants' quarters on the right, and down at the bottom, were the stables for the coachman and the horses. The stables have been now been converted into two lovely houses, and it's nice to see that part of old New Moston is being cared for. Eastwood Road used to be called Jones Street, and Jones Street was the heart, heart of a New Moston village. And here in Sladebank Terrace, this chippy shop opposite the old primitive Methodist church was the first co-op stores in New Moston. Failsworth Co-op couldn't be persuaded to open a branch in New Moston, so a group of New Moston people got together and they bought number 33 Eastwood Road and they opened their first stores here. The first venture was quite a success. They even had another shop up on Hollywood Avenue at Glossop Terrace. And in course of time, they built this building on the corner of what is now Eastwood Road and Parkfield Road. 
The first part of the building on Parkfield Road was insufficient for their needs and further on they started building on the right hand side on Eastwood Road. In its day it was quite an emporium, a grocer's shop, uh, haberdasheries, ironmongers, butchers and a cake shop. Rooms upstairs were let to various societies to hold their meetings. There are a number of foundation stones on round the building. This is the only one now legible. W. T. Jackson of New Moston, August the twenty fourth, eighteen ninety five. It's almost certain this Mr. Jackson was the father of Charlie Jackson, who did such a tremendous lot of work for the Primitive Methodist Church further down Eastwood Road. This imposing block of three-storey houses was built in 1872 by a Mr. Taylor, and he had some connections in Australia. One of the houses is called Melbourne Villa, another Adelaide House, another Portland House, and it was known variously as Temperance Terrace because Temperance was one of the great things that Mr. Taylor had in common with a lot of people at the time. In Ballantyne Close, we're looking across at the back of the house which was Dr. Ballantyne's and later Dr. Parry's. In between this house and the new house is Stansfield's Bakery. Now this is standing on the site of the Gilded Hollies. These were four cottages. The end one was the start of the primitive Methodist church in New Moston. They held their meetings downstairs and upstairs they had a room for their services. And as the congregation of the church grew, they built a new building in Jones Street, which is now Eastwood Road. We're looking at the plaque on the front of the building, 1881, and actually the building looks very much the same today as it probably did in the beginning. As well as a church, it ran an awful lot of social events. It had an orchestra, it had a cricket team, and even the Philharmonic Society. And a football team, I think they used to play up at the top, on the field at the top of Parkfield Road. Um, there was also a tennis court here, which they shared with the Oldham Western Circuit. And this went on more or less through the First World War. And when the Second World War came along in 1939, the government commandeered the Sunday school at the back, and they converted it into a, a gas uh, decontamination centre. Thankfully never used. Sunday school was reconditioned after the war, but gradually the congregation fell away, and it closed down in 1972. It's now the full gospel church. Opposite Ballantyne Close, we have the brick building in the background, which originally was the stables for the corp stores at the top of the road, which we've already talked about. Later on, this was taken over by the 346 Manchester Scout Group, and as the group grew, they built the new prefabricated building in the front, and this became their headquarters. Many boys from New Moston went through this scout group and in the yard at the back many of the boys carved their names on the set stones there. My own son David was a scout here for many years. He followed the usual custom and recently he's written his memories about his life here and it's surprising some of the things the boys got up to that the parents never knew about. One of the most romantic stories in New Moston is the history of 
Robert Clark and his tin whistle making. Robert Clark and his family came from Western Coney in Suffolk and he came to Manchester around about 1852 and he started making simple tin whistles and at the time he lived in the area of London Road Station which is now Piccadilly Station but having been born in the country he wanted to come back to a, the countryside again and he came to New Moston and of course New Moston at the time was lovely rolling countryside and he came to live here in Eastwood Road which was, of course was Jones Street and we're looking straight across at a terrace of four modern houses. Now before those houses were built there were two semi-detached cottages there number 13 and number 15. Now Robert Clark and his family lived in number 13 and in number 15, one of the sons lived, and they started building the tin whistles in the basement of the house. And as business progressed, and they started making more and more, at the back of the house, they, they built a two-story workshop where they made tin whistles for a number of years. Now, as well as building the workshop, they also built a house on the site of the present community garage, which was called Western House. And again, he built another house opposite to uh, Arnold Lofthouse's greengrocer's shop on Moston Lane East, and that was called Belua House. And the son Robert lived at Western House, and the son Fred lived at Belua House. And a whole gen generation of family of Fred Clarks lived at Belua House until it was finally put down for the present modern housing block. Anybody who's really interested in the story of the tin whistle, there's a lovely book called The Penny Tin Whistle, written by Norman Dennett. There's a copy of this in the New Moston Library, and we in the Society also have a copy. At the present time, Norman's working on a, a very much enlarged edition of this uh, story, and they were bringing in a lot more stories about New Moston. Western House stood on the site of the present community garage. A very imposing house with steps leading up to the front door. The house was pulled down round about 1960 and the present garage was built for Bill Green who had been doing repair work on cars in the district. Because of this he called it the community garage. Bill was a keen fisherman and very sadly he and his wife were on a fishing trip in Northern Ireland and his wife was drowned. When Bill came back he gave up the garage and it's now run by John Scholes. John sold petrol here until it became uneconomical to do so. Where these houses are, this is where Charlie Jackson had his garages, some 20 garages, and his son Kenneth had a model rail track here. They used to ride round on the, on the engine. Next door was the field, and the people from Oakdean House at the end of the road kept their feet, horses here. New Moston Inn on Belgrave Road, our favourite watering hole. This used to be two cottages, number 52 and number 54, Belgrave Road. The brewery at Newton Heath, Rothwells, built the present pub and the first landlord as far as we know was a man called Tommy Carter he was a local farmer Cyril Kershaw was the landlord at one time and Cyril told me a lot about the history of the pub Cyril was the brother of Arnold Kershaw and Arnold of course was the organist at St Chad's for some 60 years and Arnold always made a point on Sunday after the service of making a call at this hostelry on his way home. Opposite to New Moston Inn there's this gatepost. This is all that remains of Moston House which stood on this ground. Well, the Boardmans lived here at one time and believe it or not they made soap in the little shed in the garden. Beechwood, this lovely old house in Belgrave Road facing on to Moston Lane East. This was the home of the Needham family and the Needhams owned uh, Bower Colliery. 
If we look to the right of the house, in the background you can see the spire of St. John's Church in Failsworth. This is a landmark uh, all over the district. On the right here are three pairs of semi-detached houses and this is where Mulberry House used to stand. Mulberry House was the home of Luke Dunkley and he was a mill owner in Failsworth. Later it was bought by Matt Dunn, a local builder. He then demolished the house and he used some of the bricks for the inside walls of the three semis which he built here. Matt Dunn built many houses round about this area. Coming across onto the start of Moston Lane, we have this large red brick house on the right, Ockham Cottage, originally one house, now two separate houses. Ockham, of course, is an Isle of Man name, so there must be some connection with the island somewhere. Next door we have Stanley Terrace, and at the far end of Stanley Terrace is the newsagent. The first shop here was a confectioner's shop and it developed into a post office, the first post office in New Moston. Moving further up we've got the Maisonettes opposite the shops on Moston Lane East. This was a site of Bulloa House which was built by Fred Clark. Fred Clark of course was the eldest son of Robert Clark, the tin whistle manufacturer. Here we see the house as it was. These shops on the other side of the road were built about 1910. They've changed so very much over the years. Where we have the butchers on the end. Originally, this shop was owned by Dan Pass, and then the Blacks. The pharmacy, this was Lofthouse's shop. Albert opened the shop here before the First World War. Then his son Arnold took over. Next door, the supermarket was Sidlow's the grocer. Where Holcroft's is, was Williams the chemist. And Williams, later it was Macintosh's. And Macintosh built an extension on the side where he opened an optician shop for his son, Neil. Where the present Hazeldean Medical Center stands, this was the site of St. Chad's old uh, tin tabernacle and later the uh, parish centre which eventually the church sold to provide some money for themselves and the local doctor, Dr. Weston and the partners built this present medical centre on the corner of Hazeldean Road and Moston Lane East. Moving across now we have the present British Legion which used to be the Dancing Academy and it was built for Edith Kershaw by her parents. As well as teaching dancing, Edith and her husband had social evenings here, mainly on Saturdays, a real proper dance and you didn't turn up in any old clothes, you came in your best bib and tucker. And On the opposite side, on the corner of Eastwood Road, we have the baker's shop. At the moment it's Stansfield. It used to be Horton's shop. George Horton's son, George Horton's father. And after the post office we've mentioned further down the road, this was the second post office in New Moston until the early 1930s. Now on the right-hand side, by the window in Eastwood Road, telephone box stood here for many years and the present pillar box was also around there too. An interesting thing is this pillar box has got VR on it, Victoria. It's probably one of the few in the district. Of course the salient feature is missing. Where we see that very bleak window on the top there, there used to be a beautiful uh, turret. Look across towards Olive Mount and you'll see a similar turret on the top of that, unfortunately obscured by the tree. Olive Mount and Oak Dean, these two very impressive houses, were built by the Johnson family who owned the Ivy and the Wrigley Head cotton mills in Failsworth. Some certainty about the actual date they were built, 
but we have a postcard of a view taken before St. Chab's Tin Tabernacle was built, showing the houses on Eastwood Road, and this postcard was posted in 1904. The Johnsons lived in Oak Dean, that's the one on the left, and at the time had a clear view from their house across to the mills over the brook in Failsworth. A later owner was Mr. Howarth, who was part owner of McRae's Garage on the corner of Broadway and Oldham Road. The first people to live at Olive Mount were called Stringer, and then came Dr. George Taylor, who had his practice in Failsworth. Then his nephew, Do again Dr. George Taylor, and after this it was bought by Ewan McIntosh, the chemist, and presently the Murray family lived there. The Hollies, 126 Moston Lane East. This was Dr. Parry's house. Before that, Dr. Ballantyne lived here. Now, down the right-hand side of this house and at the back were the four cottages, the gilded hollies. This is where the Methodist church started. Dr. Parry very kindly copied his title deeds for me, and he was quite sure that before the present house was built, there was a building on the site. 129 and 127, Moston Lane East. These two semis were built by Ezekiah Smith in 1910. And the interesting thing is that after they had built them, or when they were building them, they discovered there was a spring underneath. And it's almost certain that this spring was the source of the brook that ran down behind the shops on Moston Lane East and found its way down to the brook on Hale Lane. Ezekiah and his family lived for a while at the Cedars, and it had a large orchard on the side. And then came another person called Smith, no relation at all. He was a dentist and the son-in-law of the Ingham's at Vine House. His housekeeper and receptionist was Ellen Granny Gray, the mother of Harry and Jack. Jack, who worked for the Manchester Corporation Electricity Department, lived with his house Vera, and daughters Joan and Norma in Roof Avenue. He taught in the Sunday school at Chance and later became a lay reader. Jack's nephew, Donald, took holy orders and rose to be a canon at St. Margaret's Westminster and the chaplain to the Speaker of the House of Commons. Next door at the Elms lived the Bull family. Mr. Bull was the manager of the Hope Spinning Mills in Ashton Road over in Failsworth. Woodside Cottage, 136 Moston Lane East. This house was built in 1858, and maps of that period show a path going from the right-hand side of the house across to Jones Street. At one time, a Miss Potter, who was a schoolteacher, lived here, and later Jack Chesters, and Jack was the son of Mr. Chesters, the painter and decorator in Eastwood Road. Moving up to Auburn Bank, the house right in front of us is where Sim Schofield lived, and Sim wrote his book about fails with folk. Looking up Hawthorne Road from Muston Lane, the first terrace on the right is called Hawthorne View, and the reason for this is that years ago there were beautiful Hawthorne hedges all the way up the road, and of course these have gone now. And many years ago, this was called Scholes Lane, and it le led through to Chadderton, and it got its name from the farm on the left-hand side. The farmer at the time was called Mr. Scholes. Pitt's farm, built sometime in the 16th century, um, nearly always a farm and a dairy. We, see we remember Mr. Halliwell bringing his milk round and pony and trap and delivering it to your door. This is the Ginnell leading from Hawthorne Road through to Edith Cliff Walk. Edith Cliff Walk was named after Edith Cliff, who was a well-known figure in New Moston and ended her life as a JP. Originally, the path went right through in more of a direct straight line to the white stuff and over the canal to Failsworth. Thank you. Um, 
This is probably one of the prettiest spots in New Moston, Rose Cottage and Moss Cottage in the Ginnell. We know that two, ja two generations of the Jackson family lived here. Later, the Garstang family, who came from Salmsbury, lived here. Mr. Garstang was in the cotton business. The cottages fell into disrepair and have lately been restored. Nutters Park has always been a recreational ground. And in February 1902, Manchester City Council purchased the eight acres from Richard Burton Sanderson. It was officially opened on the 15th of May 1915 by Alderman John Ward, JP, as Nutters Park, having two bowling greens, one crown and one flat. There's a pavilion, seven tennis courts, good shrubbery and floral gardens. And the whole park was enclosed by iron railings. The park keeper rang a bell outside the pavilion a few minutes before he locked the gates at dusk. St. Chad's Church. Originally, where the medical centre is now, the Tin Tabernacle stood, and this was erected in 1909. The present brick church was opened in 1931. The first rector was Poisier Bullock. Now, Poisier Bullock is a man who left his lasting impression on generations of children who went through St. Chan's. He was very much beloved, and it was a tragedy when he died in the 1950s. On the corner of Parkhurst Avenue and Moston Lane East, we have these modern houses, Eden Park, built on the site of the old board school. This is a view of the school on the corner of Parkhurst Avenue, just before it was demolished for here in the corner of the junior playing field, we can see the memorial stone of the old board school, the 34th school erected by the Education Department of the City of Manchester, and it was laid on the 23rd of February 1901. Now, many, many generations of children have gone through this school over the years, and all the correspondence we have in the History Society from people remember the school, their early days there, the happy days and their not so happy days. Many of the children from the secondary school went on to other schools in the district, mainly uh, St. Mary's School on St. Mary's Road and various technical schools in the district. Yeah. Eventually, due to reorganization, it was decided to close the school. And for a while, it became known as the Trade Works, run by a Dutch gentleman. They did all sorts of packaging and envelope work and that sort of thing. And then when that shut down, it w became the New Moston Community Centre. And at that time, the Community Centre was a thriving organisation. But gradually, over the years, Due to the lack of support for people helping, it was necessary to close down. An air raid warden's post stood here during the Second World War. Looking across the playing field, we see the trees in the park coming round to the corporation estate, gradually coming round the junior and primary school comes into view and this school was recently re-roofed and the inside brought up to date. The junior and primary school, uh, people have so many happy memories of it and it's still a lovely school. Looking across to the greengrocer's shop on the corner of Broadway and Moston Lane East, the present greengrocer's was the site of the New Moston Post Office from about probably 1929 or 1932. A matter of interest, these houses were built by Browns and, and Brown wanted to call it Brown's Corner but it never came about. Now moving round the corner, we're coming up Moston Lane, past the post box, and 
to the first red house. We remember the Deuce and Brown families here. Post office closed on the 29th of August 1995. It's interesting that this post office stands on the site of the old Crimble's farm, which we see here. And also, this part of the lane was called Crimble's Lane. Then on the 31st of August 1995, the post office reopened in the old trustee savings bank on the corner of Hollywood Avenue and Owler Lane. There used to be a clock right on the front there, and when the bank closed down, the miserable devils took the clock with them. Sure. Hollywood Avenue used to be called Broad Lane, and Owler Lane Aula is a corruption of alder because of the alder trees down the lane. Opposite the two bollards, where we see the red brick wall, was Park House. At the rear of Park House, there was some sort of a racetrack, probably for normal racing and for dog racing, and we're told that it was surrounded by a fence made of railway sleepers. And people would come as, from as far as Manchester to Moston Station and come here as spectators. And then later on, Park House became the golf club house for the Failsworth Golf Club. It was an 18-hole course, and it stretched all the way down the length of the railway as far as Williams Road in Newton Heath. And it had one of the longest tees in the country, 600 yards, and the green was just to the rear of the school on Moston Lane East. Mrs. Schofield, who was then called Fernihoff, was the stewardess at the clubhouse here, and her brother, Jess Fernihoff, took over when Mr. Farrell, the original professional, left. That would be in the mid-1920s. When Hollywood Avenue was constructed in the mid-1920s, Park House was demolished and the clubhouse moved across to what is now the present uh, Conservative Club. And Elizabeth Fernihoff was married here and she married Marshall Schofield from Little Nutter's Farm. Then when the corporation housing estate was built. The golf course had to be shortened to nine holes. The golf club house then moved down to Nutters Road on the New Moston side of the railway bridge, just where Little Nutters House used to be. The railway came through the district in 1839. Strangely, there was no station here, and it was only due to agitation of people that a station was built in 1872. And it was called Moston Station, because New Moston was just a name at the time. But the station was quite well used. I think you could go into Manchester for about fourpence. The station master was called a Mr. Glossop, who was quite a character. He was known to hold the train up for some of his latecomers, and he would tickle them off afterwards. The waiting room was, no, was quite a simple shack, but later on, it was a very posh station. You could book here to any part of the country. Trips were run to Blackpool, to Southport, you could come here in the evening, catch a train at 6 o'clock to Blackpool and be back here about 12 o'clock. And during the war, the home guard company I was in, we used to guard the platform and the waiting room on the left-hand side, but the one on the right-hand side, nobody seemed to bother about that.
Glossop Terrace on Hollywood Avenue. Let's go back some 50 or 60 years when it was Broad Lane. There were two more houses on this terrace and the front one was the branch of the New Moston Cooperative Society. And Mr. Glossop, the station master, lived in one of these houses. We're not sure, but we think it could have been named after Mr. Glossop. And next door was the original Gardener's Arms public house. And they had a wonderful bowling green at the back, and people who lived in Glossop Terrace could sit on their back garden walls and watch people playing on the bowling green. When Hollywood Avenue was made, the last two houses of Terrace were demolished, along with the Gardener's Arms, and the pub then moved across to its present position. This picture shows Glossop Terrace and the Gardener's Arms as it originally was. From where we are standing, we are looking across to the new Gardener's Arms on the corner of Lightbound Road and Moston Lane. And as you can see, it's a very elaborate building and it was really built to cater for the people from the new houses which were gradually being built around the area. As you will have noticed, the traffic flow round about here is very heavy and this is due to the construction of the new M60 motorway and hopefully when this happens the part of Hollywood Avenue may go back to its original quiet time. During the war there was a blockhouse in the middle of this roundabout guarded by the local home, home guard. Across the way where the sports ground is there was an airfield in 1919 never used as an airfield but later on in the 1920s Alan Cobham and his flying circus uh, came here and you could have flights around the district for I think it was five shillings a time. The other thing is that the local cooperative societies used to hold uh, sports days here and bring the children up in decorated horse-drawn carts. The children were all given a cup of milk and a bun. These were the good old simple days. Greengate, where thousands of people passed on their way to A.V. Rose, is now a quiet cul-de-sac and a bypass has been built over a bridge on the new motorway. This is a view from the bridge looking towards Failsworth with the hills in the distance and showing the construction of the new motorway. Many of our local characters are buried in this churchyard and here we have Robert Clark and his wife Sarah, the inventor of the tin whistle. He came from Suffolk and he pushed a handcart with his son all the way up to Manchester making tin whistles and playing them on the way to make a few pence to come into this district and establish himself as a tin whistle maker. Quite close by we have another grave, that of Charles Goddard, the brother-in-law of Robert Clark, and Charles Goddard also came from Suffolk. His grave here was his wife Anne. Charles Goddard along with Robert Clark were two of the main men concerned with the early days of the Primitive Methodist Church in Eastwood Road. Charles Goddard for a while was the Sunday School Superintendent of the Church.
Another of our personalities was William Jackson. This is his grave and also the grave of his wife, Amelia. William Jackson is the man whose name appears on the foundation stone of the New Most Incorporated Society in Eastwood Road. This mounting block was put here in 1969 on the anniversary of St. Mary's Church and it came from Lightbound Hall and it stood in front of the hall and it's reputed that uh, Cromwell used this when he stayed at the hall. On the opposite corner from St Mary's Church, on the corner of St Mary's Road, there used to be a toll house. I'm not quite sure when this was demolished. I think it was sometime in the 1920s. And here we see a view of a toll house as it used to be. We're on the start of the footpath which reads across from Nuttus Road to Hollywood Avenue and looking across here, it's unfortunate nowadays we can't see much, but this is where Great Nuttus Hall used to be and this was the home of the Cheatham family, the other great family in the district. It's so sad that this hall was be, be, had been demolished, it wouldn't have been today. And we also lost Moston Hall, which was further down St. Mary's Road. Father Brian Seal, in his book, The Moston Story, told us the whole history of the Cheatham family, and he gives the family tree. This is the hall as it used to be, and this illustration was taken from Father Seal's book. It really looks very impressive. Moving over to the bungalows was the site of the auxiliary fire service headquarters during World War II. 148 Nuttust Road. This beautiful house was the site of Little Nuttust Hall, the home of the Chatterton family, one of whose sons, William, became Bishop of Chester and later Bishop of Lincoln. Here we're looking at the hall as it used to be, with the barn on the right. And here is what we knew as Schofield's farm, looking at the back of the farm. So finally, we've reached the end of our journey round New Moston, looking at this lovely building. And Brian and I hope that you've enjoyed this journey along with us. Thank you. Shed my happy times and they've seen my tears, but when they're here with me, I don't have any fear. They are my friends here in New Boston. Perhaps you visit us, it will make our day.